Okay, uh, I guess we can just get started now. So thank you guys for coming, despite what we've all been going through lately with the, the good old coronavirus roaming around. So as you can tell, um, I'm working from home now. Uh, Roger is as well. Uh, most of us folks from Samsung are. Mine is Jeff. Um, he's still working at Samsung. Uh, yeah, I don't know why, but yeah. So um, just to reiterate, for those of you that might have trickled in after uh, what I previously said, feel free to leave any questions and stuff like that in the Zoom group chat. Um, you can you can drop your questions there, and we will get to it get to them after the presentation. And speaking of the presentation, you guys should be able to see my screen, which is the Bixby Views presentation, and it will be about building for phone, TV, appliances, watches, and more. And I guess we can just uh, go ahead and get started unless I'm missing anything. Uh, Roger, did I miss anything or we should just start now? Nope, I think you're all great. And just, all right. uh, yeah, just as you're going along, if you hear any questions, just share them in chat chat and then we'll just go through the questions uh, after the presentation one by one and you can continue asking them uh, in the chat. So don't be shy, but use chat to ask questions. Great, okay, so. There I am, Jonathan Pan. I'm a developer evangelist for Viv Labs and Samsung, winner of the 2019 internal uh, Bixby Hackathon at Samsung, and I have four too many cats. Now I spend my time uh, with my cats a lot since I'm home now, and also, you know, still working on Bixby, making new videos, things like that. And Roger, why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, everyone. Roger Kibbe. I'm a senior developer evangelist for Viv Labs. Uh, oh, I didn't know you. <laughs> So yeah, there was a, a, a 2018 hackathon uh, that I entered when I was doing independent work that I won. Uh, but uh, just a little personal things, I'm a father of two teenage daughters, hence I have a lot more gray hair than I always I used to have. Uh, no, they're great. Uh, and I'm a UC Berkeley graduate, so I always gotta say, go Bears. All right, so let's hop right into it. Um, the Bixby UI, Let's just say you ask Bixby, what's the weather today? Bixby will then start deliberating and you'll see, you might see a status message like checking the weather, after which it will present you with the results in this uh, splendid and very nice looking view where it will read to you, today it is partly cloudy with a high of 75 degrees and a low of 60 degrees. However, this UI uh, that you're seeing can be broken down into three main sections. <clears throat> Excuse me. At the top, we have the dialogue message. In the middle, we have the content area. And at the bottom, we have conversation drivers. So I'm sure many of you guys are already Bixby developers. Um, I see a couple names that I recognize. And you've all interacted with these various components before. However, Bixby Views mainly focuses on the center, which is the content area. And what can Bixby Views do for your capsule? It can add easy to use, delightful UI that works across devices in a developer friendly way. And we're gonna start with the first line, how it's easy to use and how delightful it can be. So let's talk about what, when we built Bixby Views, what was our mentality and you know, how it came to be what it is today. Version one, as you can see with these uh, very elaborate images, Version one was really simple, and you just had a text that you could put text in, you just had images that you could put images in. It's very usable, but really you couldn't have any type of customization, or you know, all the UI elements ended up just looking the same, and every capsule looked really similar to each other because of that. Version two, however, went completely the opposite direction, where you were able to just use HTML. Now, if you kind of had the option of using HTML, you end up spending so much time just tweaking each individual little thing, trying to make it look the way you want. But then, you know, you might end up with something that doesn't even look that good in the end. Or, you know, not all of us are designers. Like, for example, me, I'm definitely not a designer. So, you know, I would spend way too much time trying to tweak this, or I would need to rely on the help of a designer to get it to look good. So really, despite all the options, it ended up becoming a huge time sink and it just wasn't that usable. So then we've eventually settled on kind of expanding version one, where we added a lot of key values to individual UI elements. 
That way you can customize the style, various uh, properties, you know, aspect ratios for images, and a lot of other things that you've uh, seen inside of each of these UI components. So we believe we've reached a good balance of it being flexible, usable, all while maintaining uh, a fairly consistent Bixby feel throughout the capsules. So now let's talk about the views and what it means for it to be a list view versus a detail view. So a list view here, you can see a picture of one of my cats. This one's name is Moxie. And a list view will present you with a list of results. So this is kind of an array with a bunch of cats or a bunch of pets inside of it. Then let's say you click on it and it will take you to a detail view of that specific pet. In this case, you can see Moxie, she has 9,001 five-star ratings and you can see her specs and biography, so on and so forth. But really what's important here is to know that one has a, an array of pets and then after you select one, it will show you the details of that specific pet. And first we're gonna start with the components that make up uh, most list views that you end up encountering. And these list views are usually composed of different types of cards. On the left, you can see the movie finder, I believe sample capsule, where the recommendation card is a thumbnail card. And a thumbnail card, you can see, has an image here, along with uh, some text on the right. And next, for the more results section, we have the cell cards, which has a slot one for this image, along with a slot two, and an optional slot three, but you know, this one doesn't use a slot three, but you can put text, you can put image there just like that. And then we have an image card where you have the image as the main highlight. And then you can put, you can actually overlay a uh, text on an image card, which is, I believe, the only component that you can actually overlay text on top of, one of the only components that you can overlay text on top of an image. And finally, you can also add text to the, um, you know, this area underneath the image card. We have the cell area, which is the cell card without the touchable opacity in the background. So um, this way it indicates that it's not clickable. And finally, we have the compound card, which is probably the most uh, flexible of all the cards. Here you can see that the compound, this compound card is made up of a cell area a single line where single lines you can actually put inline images inside of a single line hence why you can put these little stars there and a paragraph and finally the title area of the um, compound card and you see that the text there ends up being a bit darker smaller and to the bottom right so yes that was the mo most of the stuff that makes up the list view right there and then Let's go into most of the components that make up a detail view. So here we have, um, we, here we have on the left, let's say you clicked on the movie Bohemian Rhapsody in that movie finder capsule from the previous slide. You can see that this here is just an image followed by an image list down here and an image carousel. So these are the three main ways of presenting images inside of a detail view. You have the static image with nothing fancy, just a standard image, which you can click on and then zoom in and out of. You have an image list, which if you like to show like a series of small images side by side, you can scroll through them and take a look at the images. You have an image carousel, which if you swipe through from left to right here, you'll be able to see uh, each of the images within this image carousel. And both the image carousel and the image list take a, an array of images, well, whereas the image here just takes uh, a, a URL or something, so yeah. And here we have a map card, um, obviously good for showing maps and showing a location in the map. And we have paragraphs, so now we're getting into the different types of texts that you can have. Paragraphs have many different stylings. <clears throat> you can see uh, these various title options, along with uh, some detail options. And here there's HBox and VBox. So HBoxes and VBoxes are very useful 
for basically showing things you know side by side. If any of you have worked with HTML, CSS, it's similar to the CSS grid system, or if you've used, for example, Bootstrap and various other um, you know, CSS uh, libraries like that, it's similar to their row grid system, where the horizontal box would be the row and the vertical system would be the columns. And here you can see that the H boxes are actually used throughout. Right here we have, these are H boxes, and over here for the uh, weather, we have H boxes as well. So, Bixby Views works across devices. And as you're aware, Samsung has a huge device ecosystem. I believe in 2018 alone, uh, Samsung sold over 285 million mobile phones. Now, not all of them are Bixby enabled, but many, many of them are. So the smartphone lineup, uh, now it's actually updated since the time I created this um, presentation. We now have the S20 along with the Z Flip. Uh, but here you can see you know, the, the lineup of mobile. We also have tablets. We have wearables like watches, earbuds, so on and so forth. We have computers, TVs, home audio systems, appliances, and smart home. And the goal is obviously to get Bixby on as many of these devices as possible and to be seamlessly integrated throughout our entire ecosystem. Now the good news is that you can already develop for mobile today and the marketplace is also available. So um, if you create a capsule and you submit it to us and it gets approved, it will be live on the marketplace and Bixby users can see it, can use it, and can be delighted by what you've created. Now we also have the TV, which we've been working on uh, bringing out the marketplace for, and that marketplace is slated to be coming in 2020. Now, despite the marketplace not being out as of today, you can still develop for it in your IDE, in the Bixby Studio IDE. And finally, we have the refrigerator and the watch, which are also coming and which you can also start developing for today. So let's move on to how components work in Bixby Views and how they can adapt to the different devices that you know, I showed you in the previous slide. And here we can see the same example from earlier with the Find a Pet capsule, where you can uh, click on Moxie and it will show you additional details. Now this here is the mobile view. Uh, for example, this one I believe is the Note 10 mobile view. Now, how would this look on the watch? Well, you can see there that it actually automatically adapts its view to the watch's view. And this is without actually doing any specific code for the watch itself. Then let's say you click on Moxie. The watch will actually expand like this. And there's very minimal code here that went into to customize this specific view for the watch. But most of the code here is automatically adaptive from the views of the mobile device. And similarly on the TV, this is the automatic views that it ends up creating based on the views that you had for your mobile device. And if you click on Moxie, it will show her details just like that. And on the TV UI, you'll be able to expand it fully and scroll through using the TV remote to see the rest of Moxie's details. And this is all done without, with pretty much just a single line of code to enable these devices. So that's cool. Um, also, input views are responsive as well. Uh, input views in general, you don't have as much uh, ability to customize as of today. For example, in this calendar input view, you can't really you know, change it too much. But um, these are automatically responsive on the phone, the fridge, and vertical device layouts. You'll see it like this. Whereas on the TV, you'll see it in a horizontal layout. So you don't actually have to go through and change anything to make it you know, behave this way on these different devices. So ne next, let's talk about how Bixby Views is developer friendly. So just like I mentioned earlier, um, the watch was mostly untouched, however, H-boxes and watches often run into this problem, where obviously on a wider viewport, you're able to display more columns of information. 
However, the watch, given it's a you know, real estate space, is very small. And H boxes will often concatenate like this or truncate. And you won't be able to properly read the information here. So how do we fix that? We fix that with a very simple if else clause. And here we can see if dollar sign can dot device equals in single quotes Bixby hyphen watch, we use two H boxes. So what this does is it would create two rows. Otherwise, it will just be one H box. So in the case that you're not using a Bixby watch, so in other words, Bixby mobile, fridge, and uh, what was the uh, TV, it will be a single H box. And that's what it ends up looking like on the watch itself. So then it would be divided into two rows where you'd easily be able to read the information for Moxie there. Alternatively, you can take the route of having a completely different layout file per device. So in Bixby Studio, normally you have your base folder where you put your views in. And here we have the base recipe.view.bxb. And you can also create a folder called the Bixby hyphen watch and put a view file in there. So now if the uh, viewport is the Bixby watch, it will, use this view, it will use this view file instead of the base view file. And what ends up happening is that all the other devices, except for the watch, end up using the base view file. And you can see this illustrated as the phone and the TV, along with the fridge, will all use the recipe.view.bxb file, whereas the, recipe, or whereas the watch will use the view file inside the Bixby-watch uh, folder. And there goes my Bixby on my phone uh, starting. So hmm, I don't see any folders like that. Oh, OK. <laughs> anyway, so here we have uh, the Bixby Studio simulator. In the simulator, um, many of you have, may have noticed in the settings, you can actually change the different mobile device. And you can see here, we have the options for Note 9, S9, S9 Plus. And this is what it looks like in the mobile device simulator. See, I believe this one's the uh, S9 Plus or the Note, uh, Note 9, I'm not sure. And then here, this is what it would look like on the fridge. So the simulator actually supports uh, all the device ecosystems as of today. And this is what it would look like in the simulator on the watch. And finally, this is what it would look like in the simulator on the TV. And speaking of the simulator, I'll go ahead and just uh, hop right over to it. Here we can see this exact capsule, the Find a Pet capsule. And if we just hit start. Here are seven adorable pets. You can see there we have this capsule. And if we click on this. Meet Muxie. Moxie works there. And you can see Moxie's details. So that's great and all, but here, this is what you guys came here for, and it's how to enable, uh, how to enable your capsule for the different devices. So on lines nine through 10, I have a commented out, but I can just uncomment it. And oh, it looks like my uh, mouse disappeared. Uh, let's see if I, oh, okay, there it is. So anyway, uh, looks like, so after you uncomment these, you'll see a warning that says it's not yet supported in the marketplace, but you can still develop for it. So all you have to do is you click right here on this little area, and you can select your target, which it's not um, uh, updating yet. So, okay, let's uh, restart the simulator real quick. And hopefully it will update properly. There's a chance that, uh, okay, yeah. Maybe my uh, Bixby Studio is actually a bit out of sync right now. So, yeah, since I left it on overnight, but let me go ahead and um, fire it back up. Uh, okay. All right, still syncing. Looks like it's uh, struggling a bit to do this right now. All right, it's taking his time compiling. Hopefully, um, hopefully that'll start working soon, or else this is going to be a little awkward. Okay. 
All right, well, seems like it doesn't want to sync right now. Um, I'll probably get back to that uh, when the opportunity rises. Anyway, so we also have autocomplete, which really helps uh, developers figure out what they want to put inside of you know, the various um, UI components. So here, for example, we have the image card. Now, you may not know all the key value pairings that you have available inside of the, for example, title area. All you have to do is press control space, and then it will show you the various options you have. In this case, you have H align, center, end, and start. You have slot one, two, and three as well. And finally, we have the documentation. I think many of you guys have already experienced it, but you can search individual UI components like the cell card to see code snippets along with, um, <clears throat> excuse me, along with various uh, examples of it and along with the various key value pairs that it has available. And speaking of the documentation, I'll actually hop over there and yeah, it's still syncing, not sure why. Um, so anyway, here we have the documentation. Let's just say, let's look for a cell card. There it is, we can click on the first one, macro def, and it'll give you code snippets along with uh, preview pictures of it. And you can also search for, so my favorite place to actually look at um, UI components is actually in the content.section.content. And here you can see a list of all the different UI elements. And you have the cell area right here. And if you click back, you have, you know, compound cards, dividers, H boxes. You have all of them here that you can take a look and you can browse them, figure out which one you might need for your individual capsule. So let's see. Yeah, maybe it just doesn't want to, uh, yeah, maybe it just doesn't like my pet capsule anymore. But that's okay, I didn't even like it that much. So, what about the Mad Libs one? Oh, okay. Oh, I, I was in the wrong capsule.dxp. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, well, does Mad Libs work? Okay. All right, so I guess Mad Libs is working right now. We can see that um, we can see here that the TV simulator. So, like I was saying earlier, you can click on this thing, and then you can click on the target, and there you'll be able to see the TV, fridge, and watch available. And here, if we start the Mad Libs capsule, you can see that. Let's do. Um, oh yeah, this is kind of applicable right now. Walmart shopping. Uh, we probably shouldn't run through the entire Mad Libs, though. That's going to take a little while. But basically, Mad Libs capsule, right? You can fill in a bunch of inputs, and then it will spit out some silly thing that you just created. Uh, but you can see that the UI here is automatically adaptive. Starting Walmart shopping. Please provide an intransitive verb. <laughs> intransitive verb, okay. So uh, I believe intransitive means that you can do it, but you're not doing it to something else. So like seeing, yeah. That's one. No, give me an adjective. But yeah, this will take a while. Um, either way, I just want to show you that these UI elements are adaptive to the different. Which Mad Lib would you like to do? To the different uh, devices. Here we can see that this automatically adapted to the watch and likewise to the fridge as well. The fridge, though. Which Mad Lib would you like to do? The fridge, though, just looks like a larger mobile device. And I think Find a Pet's probably working now as well. So if we go to watch, we can start it. Here are seven adorable pets. There we go. And now if we click on Moxie. This is Moxie. Moxie works very hard. Here you can see the H boxes that I had mentioned earlier. And I'd also like to show you just the code snippet for that real quick. If we go to petdetails.layout, we can see right here. <clears throat> Line 64, if dollar can dot device. This is where you use the uh, dollar can and where you have access to the variable. You don't actually have to import it or anything like that. Um, as long as you're at the layout level, uh, the layout file level or the view file level, I believe also has access to the dot can variable. You can just call it there and utilize it. So now in this case, if we we are in the watch, so let's go back to the simulator and I'll actually put this on the side real quick so you guys can see it. If we are in the watch, you have this H box and you have the second H box right here. 
Otherwise, for any of the other devices, you just have one single giant H box that has four V boxes inside of it. So yeah, that's a pretty simple way to customize it. And let's moving forward, um, be sure to check out our YouTube channel. There we have a lot of great tutorials, especially uh, if you're part of, if you're in this talk right now and you have any questions about how to build, find a pet, for example, there's a result view tutorial where you code along and you build this uh, capsule, or at least this view for this capsule. Be sure to follow us on social media, twitter.com slash Bixby Developers. There, um, uh, my colleague Roger Kibbe likes to tweet a lot there. And our facebook.com slash Bixby Developers as well. And finally, you can follow me at twitter.com slash John without the H. Uh, John without the H ends up being my name, which is just J-O-N. Likewise, you can, follow, you can uh, add me on LinkedIn at John and Pan. And, um, you know, I try my best to check it and stuff uh, whenever, whenever I can, but, you know, sometimes it might take a week or so. And also, we have a lot of sample code at Bixby Developers or github.com slash Bixby Developers, which I can just show you guys real quick. And um, oh, the mouse disappeared again. Let's see. There it is. Okay. So here are Bixby Developers GitHub. The sample movie agent has a really good UI. We have the um, result view tutorial, which also has the uh, find a pet UI along with the find a pet capsule. We have the, uh, let's see, what are they called? I think the, um, this one, the capsule samples collection. This also has Bixby views as a good one to get started with. And yeah, so there's just a lot of sample code here. Feel free to dig through it and find what you guys need off of it. And yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for this presentation on how to bring your devices, or sorry, how to bring your capsule to multiple devices. Really just add those few lines of code and it will enable it for your simulator. And then you can start plunking around on the TV, refrigerator, and watch as well so okay that's uh all right so let's open it up for questions i have a few that are coming um i wanted did want to make one note um i've seen this presentation i think this is the third time and i found an error in it so you need to the okay. dollar sign can is not available you need to see use uh dollar sign viv context dot device for device uh for uh, detecting the device. But if you look at dollar sign viv context.device in the documentation, you'll see that it does exactly the same thing. Um, but anyway, going on to the questions, and please uh, keep on adding them in chat. The first question, I'll ask the moderator right now, Jonathan, and, and let you answer, but if you want me to answer, go, go ahead. Um, is the map a view that can be manipulated on the way? I guess they're asking, can you manipulate a map view? Uh, you probably can with a refresh. Uh, I haven't tried this, but using refresh, you might be able to update, for example, where the pinpoint is in a result view. So I'm gonna give a tentative yes to that question. I'm gonna give a for sure yes, because if you use the Uber or Lyft capsules, it actually shows you a map view and actually refreshes. So it's not dynamic. Once you stick that out and you decide those points are gonna show on there, it will just show statically that map, but you can use a refresh to refresh it. So every X seconds and change where the points are. Um, Cause basically what a refresh does is it re-executes your view and you need to have the code in there to say, so for instance, in those two capsules, um, it's showing you in the Bixby capsule uh, where the driver is compared to where you are. Uh, next question. When you get a moment, is there a way to make the image on the TV full screen or close to it? <clears throat> uh, an image on the TV full screen or close to it? Um, I'm not sure. I would say no. You should pro you, I, the best way to go about that is really to just try it and um, you know plunk around with it. 
I don't think so. The images usually are just, you know, it's, it's a set amount of space that the TV uh, takes up. And uh, you don't have control over, for example, how much, you know, space that the Bixby UI takes up on the TV, but you have control over everything in that space that, you know, you know, that Bixby takes up. So, yeah, I would say that you can't put a full screen image on a TV. Yeah, I don't think you can either. I know in it, initially it'll just show up in half screen and then if the user clicks the up button um, on the remote, then, it, then the UI goes full screen, but I don't think an image is there. All right, next question. What should developers do if they need a new UI widget that is not currently available? <clears throat> Uh, I would suggest making a feature request over at BixbyDevelopers.com for a UI widget that's not available. Alternatively, you could ask perhaps one of us and maybe um, we could recommend something that you could use as a substitute or that's kind of close enough. So that, that's how I'd approach it. Unfortunately, there's no way to create a new UI element uh, for you know developers right now. Okay, all right. Uh, and last question, so bring, keep on bringing on the questions if you have some more. Uh, should we, can we depend on the existing layouts for the different targets, or is that subject to change closer to marketplace release? Uh, so that, that's a good question. I would say for now, you can, you can pretty much depend on your current layouts. The main UI components that I'd be concerned about are H boxes because those end up looking pretty bad on mo on watches a lot of the time. However, for most of the other UI elements, I believe they should be all ported over pretty well. You know, it's 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 a pretty responsive system. So, um, but now of course we're not going to know for sure until you know we actually do release it. And if we do run into different you know UI problems, then you may have to customize it a bit more than you expect. So for now though. I'd say yes, you can rely on it. Okay, new question. On maps, can you choose which map marker is focused on? Uh, huh, I'm not sure. We'd have to look at the documentation for that. Let's, um, I guess I can go take a quick look. Uh, Roger, if you want to. Yeah, I was just bringing it up myself and things like that. I mean, I know you can do, you could set the, um, the markers. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, I see markers, but I don't see how you could highlight a marker. I mean, you can do, you can make an icon. That would be the, what oh, I suggest is you yeah, create an icon. icon. icon you, yes. you know, each marker can have a different icon. You create an icon, maybe a star or something that stands out versus yeah. icons. That's the way I'd do it. Yeah, yeah. So actually, I'll just share it real quick just to, uh, emphasize what Roger was saying. So right here, you have the option to set your icons, the image for the icon itself. And there you can have different icons for, you know, different markers. And, you know, you could have all of them be the same icon except for one, which is the one you'd want to highlight. So yes, you can highlight one. Uh, let's see. Sorry, lost track because I was I was watching you, not watching the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, when is UK Marketplace coming? Oh, uh, yeah, I I don't know. That, that's that's a great question. I don't know. It's a tentative soon, I guess. Soonish. Uh, and then, how does input views versus result result views differ? Oh yeah, so that, that's a great question. Input views and result views do have fundamentally different behavior. <clears throat> and one sec, let me drink some water. Let me answer this or go ahead. Uh, yeah, sure, I, I, can, I can go ahead now. So yeah. in, input, input views lock you into that view, that input, expecting an input from the user. So it's, it's basically interpreting you to be at the scope of you know, the input view. Whereas result views are kind of like at the top level of the capsule. And you know, unless you have a conversation driver or a follow up in a result view, you're not actually locked into your individual capsule. So those are two really different behaviors, mainly in terms of how the conversational content or how the context is managed. 
and how your session is managed. So <clears throat> I'm not sure if that's a great answer, but um, you know, it's, it's kind of like whether you're locked in your capsule, how it's locked into your capsule, that's where you know, the, the behavior is different. Okay, um, so there's a comment about uh, it's probably easier to use device login in the base view whenever possible, then create a whole new set of view files in each target, and that's a suggestion. And I'm gonna actually say, no, I would strongly suggest not doing that, because that's a lot of extra work. I actually think that you'll get most of your views will work across the multiple devices, and that you what you should do is use, if necessary, use an if, like Jonathan did, to modify that one view, for instance, for the watch. So then that one view can be for the watch, the TV, um, the, uh, the appliance, and the phone, and all work across there, versus I would, I to my mind, it sounds like a, ma a big maintenance headache to create separate views unless you for each device unless you absolutely have to. I can tell you that with the internal development that's been done for the other devices, that has not generally ne been necessary. It's been more like, here's maybe occasionally a separate view for a device, but more likely there's maybe like an if um, for a device. And I think Jonathan uh, nailed it on the head that the watch might be the trickiest one just because of the really limited screen real estate there and that you want to um, definitely check it out on the watch and that's where you might need to do use an if. But I, I would keep the number of view files uh, as much as possible to keep them common across devices, not separate. All right, so then there is a question about whether there other marketplaces like India, Australia, Canada, et cetera? Uh, yeah, I mean, same answer to the you know one for Britain. Unfortunately, I don't have a timeline, and you know can't really say when that might happen. Yeah, I guess I'd add that I think the European marketplaces are um, probably the next ones to come out. Um, but stay tuned. Um, so there is a comment about not liking watch scrolling or card view that's guaranteed to sit with a single watch screen, the image slot, a text slot, and one another. That sounds like a, a um, make that suggestion. So a static uh, thing that shows in the watch. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's possible you could create a small enough image that it doesn't scroll today. But um, yeah, you could definitely make, make that request. Yeah, the watch is really tricky to design for. I mean, you, you inherently need to scroll. I mean, not just our watch, but if you look at other competing watches like the Apple Watch, a lot of the functionality scrolls mm. or moves across things. It's just such a small UI. But um, yeah, so if you think that's a good idea, definitely make a uh, request for that. Okay, what should I do if I find a UI problem inconsistency with a particular view or widget? Jonathan, you want to take that one? Uh, yeah, I mean, just, you know, make a feature request or submit it in BixbyDevelopers.com. Uh, you know, like, I don't know. That's not a feature request. Well, a support yeah. request. Kind of a bug, re bug report. Right? Yeah. So go in, if you're in the, um, the developer studio and there's a way to, uh, to uh, create a, show a bug and create a bug. Um, oh, okay. Because it's possible, it could be a bug or just something where we want to, uh, Maybe we need better documentation about how something works. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I can just, you know, uh, share. Here it is. So if you click on this little support button, there is an open support ticket, report issues, request support, or you can request new features. Either of these go to, you know, uh, you know, go to people at Viv and they'll see it. So, yeah. yeah but it, a support ticket is, is, goes in as something's broken. And so you want an immediate solution, whereas a feature request is, is we just don't have a feature that you want. So they're different cues. So please use them appropriately. And um, I, I noticed that we kind of, I think we skipped over Jenny's comment on how uh, that's what I currently do, referring to using a different icon for the different markers. But Jenny was referencing how she wanted to be able to f center one of the specific markers. And you're correct, that feature is not available uh, in the map cards. You can't, 
let, let's say you have 12 different points in the map, you can't center the map on one of those specific points. It's just going to be automatically centered on, you know, whatever. So uh, that might be, you know, a, a feature request that you can make through bigspeeddevelopers.com. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see. Um, will there be remote support for Bixby TVs? I mean, remote control. Uh, I'll just answer that. Yes. I mean, actually, the remote is the um, replacement. So think about on a phone on Bixby, you have the touch screen, and you can navigate and click things. So uh, on the remote, on a TV capsule, uh, and if you saw Jonathan's list, like the cats, um, you could have selected one by, I don't know if this is, either by using the cat's name, if he's coded that in, or saying like first one, second one by voice. But you also could use the TV remote and it actually would highlight them as you, as you scrolled across. So, you know, just like you'd see on other, you've probably seen this on any kind of smart TV kind of application where you, you use the remote to highlight something and then click okay for it to happen or, or enter whatever it is on your remote. Um, that would work exactly the same way. All right. There is a question. Do you guys use Sketch for UI design? And the answer is yes, we do. And um, there is actually some Sketch, uh, which I don't remember where they are because I never go to that section. It's in the design guides. But I'll, I'll find it while Jonathan's answering some questions, and I'll share the link there. Um, uh, sure. Can you link to sample code here? I want to try out straight away. Sample code for what? I guess I'd ask. Yeah, which sample code? Will there be support for touchscreen TVs? Hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I'd, I'd assume if the, does Samsung have touchscreen TVs? I'm not aware that we do, but if there, we do, if, I'd have to, I don't know. If we do, I mean, I'd assume that you know, touching on it would have the same effect as clicking on it with the remote. You know, I'd imagine that would be what happens. So, yeah. And, so, um, and then there's a question about is on device testing available for watches or other devices? Is, yes. How do you do this? Or no, when will it be available? And um, the answer to that is no, they are not currently available. And I would expect them to be available shortly around the time that the marketplaces are available. So, yeah. Sometime 2020. All right. And I'm going to send in the chat a link to where the uh, sketch resources are and things. And so there's a mobile Bixby, a sketch for both mobile and watch, not yet for TV um, um, or the fridge. But really, um, so if you have a UI designer who may be used to using sketch, I uh, think you can definitely use those. And, Take a look at that uh, link that I just shared. Um, okay. Uh, so Jenny is asking the code for enabling the devices in simulator. Uh, I pasted it in the chat. It's just targets. And then uh, I believe we have, let me see if I can find a link to the docs too. And then, let's see. Is there something that, ex so I'll just answer question. Is there something that explains what, if any, device info is available to capsule? E.g., can we see what source the TV is selected? Ambient versus cable or watch accelerometer? No. So um, you can't see what the, the TV, so I think there's cool features there and all kinds of privacy implications in that kind of feature request. I think there already is a feature request about um, the watch and some kind of, uh, capabilities there. I'd love to be able, like I, th I'll just share that I think it'd be incredible to know what the user's watching on the TV to Bixby, and you could do some really amazing interactive uh, capabilities. On the other hand, there's pretty serious privacy implications there, but uh, maybe if the user opted in. So I think it's a cool feature. Um, definitely, uh, if you like it, make a request. But yeah, no, right now you don't know. You can use the TV but you don't know um, what, what they're doing with the TV. Okay. All right. What else, guys? Any other questions? All right. Well, 
if there are no qu more questions, um, we are definitely going to uh, put this up, we're recording this, and we'll put this up on YouTube uh, fairly shortly, probably early next week. So if you wanted to go back or see anything. Uh, well, wait, we got a question. Is there a way, a really broad one, is there a way to know device capability? I'm not, I, I, I need more device capability around what is, I guess, what I could ask. So I, I, I can kind of answer this. Um, you can kind of assume that if your capsule works for mobile, that it will mostly work for fridge TV and um, uh, fridge TV and the watch. Just be careful about H boxes on the watch. But another device that I actually didn't talk about is the speaker. And I will say that the way, you know, if your capsule, oh, okay, yeah, if your capsule works, you know, like this, you, you'd have to make it hands eye free. So, yeah. <laughs> device features okay uh, any more questions how do you test half oh that's a good question yeah so okay let me just uh, show you guys real quick in the simulator and here we have this so to test hands-free there's this little checkbox right here called hands-free and you can just click on that and now it'll say hands-free mode enabled so then if you start it there will be some different behaviors for this. And you notice that the watch actually auto scrolled down after it read the dialogue. So if we actually do that real quick, do that again. Oop, see it auto scrolled just like that. So yeah, just click this checkbox for hands-free and then you're in hands-free mode. Hey Jonathan, you wanna show them how to use the speaker, the button for the speaker on the ID? Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, yeah. Share. You're in hands-free mode. So now, um, basically, you know, you can just click and hold this little microphone icon, start, and that that's one way to, you know, basically pretend like you're talking to Bixby uh, with your voice as well. So yeah, I'd recommend, uh, you know, testing it with voice and when you're in hands-free mode. So, yeah. Um, so then there's a question about half. How to, how to use Bixi enter half mode? Look, I can answer this. Um, so there's half mode, hands and eyes free, and hum, hands and eyes, hands on mode. Um, so it really depends on whether you said hi Bixby. So if you say hi Bixby and enable a capsule there, then you're in half mode. And what that means is because you use voice to invoke Bixby, uh, you don't know if the user can actually see or interact with the screen. So you want to make appropriately design your capsule. Um, however, I will say they often can say that, see the screen. We know that um, more than half the pe way people start Bixby is via high Bixby. So we know sometimes they're in front of a screen. So if you're doing half mode, you want to think about, for instance, richer, um, richer dialogue, more speech. Um, but you definitely still, I would still recommend showing a full UI because you, they could be using the UI as well. Whereas in home mode, um, and that's uh, hands-on mode, that's when you've used the Bixby button. And so in that case, um, the assumption is, is that uh, the user is in front of the screen uh, or has and can interact uh, with the screen. So there's a Bixby button on all the devices. So there's a one on the, the phone, there's one on the watch, there's one on the TV remote. Um, and there's one on the refrigerator. It's a touchscreen device. So that would be, that's half versus home. Is there a way to programmatically know if you're in half mode? Yeah, it's in uh, Viv Context. And I'd have to look it up, even though I, uh, oh, no, no, sorry. It's not in Viv Context. There's a, it's called dollar sign hands free. It's a variable. Um, you know, any of these variables that start with dollar sign are kind of reserved and that you can say, um, is that, uh, is that true? Then you know that you're hand in half mode and if it's false, then you know when you're in home mode. How does hands on work if the Bixies don't have the dedicated Bixby button? Um, it's just a double click. It depends. The user has some options, but it's just a, uh, like, like on my, my, uh, new S20 that's in front of me, if I double click the uh, power button, it does it. So it's all built into the power button. There's a couple options. I think, I believe, I can't remember, because I like double click. 
it's um, um, it works. I think you can also long hold it to enable it. Like hands free is a list of further variables like that somewhere. I don't know if there's a list, but there's only two of them: hands free and viv context. Um, so it depends on the scope that you're at or where you are in Bixby. If you're at the JavaScript level, you have access to viv context. If you're in the Bixby files, you have access to, for example, dollar sign hands free and um, the dollar sign can variable that I showed earlier. In, in, in the Bixby in the Bixby scope, you don't have access to viv context. So it depends where you're trying to access, you know, for which device that you're using. Uh, yeah, I guess this kind of turned into a uh, hands-free seminar, um, which actually that would be a great uh, webinar to actually have, would be a hands-free one, because <clears throat> it does improve the usage of your capsule, while also it's actually a somewhat complex topic. Uh, so yeah, um, maybe that'll be the next one coming up. Perfect. All right, uh, let's see, checking the questions. Um, I don't see any more and we're getting near the top of the hour. So thank you guys. Um, really, really excellent questions. Um, and you know, you don't have to stop here. Um, if you're on one of our Slack channels, you can engage us further there, uh, but feel free to reach out. Um, and, uh, I hope you got a lot of value from this. Uh, every time I see Jonathan's presentation, I learn something new because I'm no good at the UI. So, I'm always slacking Jonathan questions about how to do something in the UI. So I really enjoyed it. So thanks, Jonathan. Uh, yeah. Thanks, guys, for coming. I uh, really appreciate you taking uh, time out of your day to join us like this. So yeah, stay safe from uh, coronavirus, you know. It's pretty scary stuff. All right. Take it easy. Thanks, okay. everyone. Bye.